For the past four or five days, Dan traveled with me to northern Wisconsin here in Oneida County. We fished the areas of Oneida, Vilas, and Iron Counties for predominantly largemouth and smallmouth bass. When the opportunity arose to take a ride up to northern Wisconsin for some smallmouth bass fishing, I knew I couldn't pass it up after I seen some of the photos uh, of fish that guys have been pulling out. I jumped at the chance. Day one began with the village of Saner, Wisconsin. We fished a couple of lakes in that area. I started fishing there two weeks ago with Jake, and these are the lakes where we actually caught some ginormous smallmouth bass, fish that were around 20 inches. <laughs> this is cheating. Won't be like this all day, though. Bicycle. Got it right on the bottom while we're jump. We're out here on uh, Booker Lake here in Vilas County. We want to show Dan here how big these fish are. Dan's a cameraman today because we don't have a third in the boat. But figure this one's probably 18. Maybe not even. 16 is lucky. So I just wanted to show him how how easy it looks. If you find the fish shallow, they'll eat it. So we'll get her back right now. Right when we arrived at the lake, I knew I was in a little bit of trouble. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be any kind of fishing that I was used to back in my home waters in Chicago. Uh, I fish muddy reservoir, braided line. Uh, here, the name of the game is crystal clear water and light line. He's a follower too. One doesn't want to come in. Oh man. Toad. It's funny about these fish when they're in the water, they don't look as big. But you got them close in, and they look big. I can't lie, I was struggling out there for a while. Uh, fish were breaking me off far out right at the boat. Andrew was bringing them in no problem. Uh, I can't lie, I was getting my butt kicked out there. There we Compared with a couple weeks ago when we fished there, the action was a little slowed down, but we still managed to find quite a few nice fish. They were hitting Travis Crossman's Stanks products, the Stanks 4-inch stick on a weighted uh, worm hook. Up. And again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> Come 
We also found a lot of fish on the X ramps. The biggest fish that we uh, pulled out of this lake were approximately 18, 19 inches, so it was pretty fun action. Got him. Just in time. It's a nice fish. That's what we're talking about. Big country smallmouth bass. If there's a big country one, this one's that. Queen of the lake right here. Oh my god. Taking us for a run. Taking a photo of this one. Make sure the kids go on. Like when I had the rod just now, you can like hear, <laughs> like swim away underwater. You can just hear that tail go, Jesus Christ. like a fan. And I saw her all the way in the shallows. I didn't know if she was gonna take it or whatnot. Got it hooked perfect. I mean perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it's almost too big for me to lift. Ah. On the stinks. Beauty, ain't she? 20. Oh, 20 and a half. Well, here she goes. Beauty. Alright. Big fish. Definitely a fiver. There she goes. I've become in love with the turtle Flambeau Flowage located in Mercer, Wisconsin. I began to seriously fish this 14,000 acre body of water last summer and since then I've been seldomly disappointed in what I can catch and find out of this place. I didn't even know I had her on. She's not as big as we thought it was, but good fish nonetheless. I saw her, she was going like the opposite way where I, where I uh, placed my lure. So. They're on uh, the cove of the turtle flambeau flowage. Uh, Danny and I, we were just fishing like rock piles, islands, sandbars, rock bars, but we weren't getting many fish. So now we just went into some of the coves, the deeper ones that are just lined with rock and wood. And I think our best option right now, given the weather conditions, is to sight fish. Like we're seeing fish cruising, the shallows, we're seeing some on beds, but we're avoiding the ones on beds for the most part. So we're just seeing fish like this, just trying to catch them, make something out of our day here. The flambeau flowage was some of the nicest scenery that I've ever fished in. Uh, it's teeming with wildlife. Um, even though the fishing was slow and tough out there, there's always something to look at. Uh, and when we did finally get our hands on a few of the small mouths out there, it was like reeling in a football. Big and round. Here we are on a turtle flambeau flambeau flowage. 
filming our football segment out on this big body of water in Iron County. So after a tough, tough little uh, four hours out on the lake so far with Dan, so far we've seen this guy. He was just shallow. I think he came in after our x wraps but I picked him off from some rocks and wood. And then we've seen a couple fish, but really overall nothing yet. But hopefully we can find some more by the time our day is done. And just look at the body proportion on this fish. Big body and short tail. That's a football. That one. That's a stink X right there. Nice fish, though. Alright, we're still sight fishing, sort of. Just casting towards the drop offs. I think what we're doing is gonna work right now. Like these fish aren't active, but they're still in the shallows. Dan and I were just blindly casting our jigs. Jigs with either a creature or a craw. I decided to go with the chopper's twin tail in root beer color, just like that, and this guy hits. So you can see the shore just littered with rock and drop offs everywhere. The fishing was tough, so I went from finesse, cranks, uh, put the X-Wrap back on for a while. Uh, and we finally did manage a few fish. Now this is good. <laughs> frog heaven. All right. I began fishing frog heaven during the spring of 2009. This whole area, it's basically on the Manaqua chain of lakes, but nobody really knows about it. We even bothers to fish it because boat access and navigation in there is difficult. It's basically like a one mile long stretch of slop and weeded in water. When we arrived at the next lake, uh, I felt a little more comfortable right off the bat. Uh, the water was a little less clear, lots of weeds, lots of pads. Oh my. There was a fish on there though, at one point. But here's what we're throwing. Thanks, Buzz Frogs. I had these uh, custom colors made by Travis Crossman. Like, fish just love them in here. So far, I've had like two hits in my last two casts. But first one was a big gulp. I thought the fish had it. Looked decent size. And then this one, like, once the frog landed immediately in the water, something took it. And then I got stuck as you just saw. Frog Heaven has a lot of largemouth bass and the occasional big northern pike. So the best techniques for there are to buzz your frogs right through the pads. Just buzz them, cast them out, retrieve, hope for a bite, and usually when they bite you'll see them slam it. And we were having explosions on every other cast out there. The fishing was consistent, the fish were a little smaller, but when you're catching this many fish, who cares, it's a lot of fun. Brought me a salad. Uh, the highlight from Frog Heaven was when we were fishing beneath the bridge. Right underneath the bridge. Like I had a backlash, I cast it off the other end. We got like a four pound fish on it. <laughs> I don't believe this. Every so often, they got nice fish in here. Nice fish underneath the freaking bridge. Anyways, after a couple photos, we're getting her back in. 
this is pretty crazy. Like, I didn't even have to burn it. I'm just shy of 20. What is this? She spawned out too. There she goes. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I've caught a lot of pike before, but they've always been out of uh, muddier water, and I've never really had the opportunity to throw top water at them or see a vicious pike strike. So I was excited when Andrew told me that there were northern pike as well as largemouth bass mixed in these lily pads. On about my 2,000th cast, I pulled my frog slowly off of a pad, and it looked like God dropped a boulder from the sky. Vicious, vicious strike. I thought I had on an eight pound bass. Well, she went right into the weed and tangled herself up, so we had to troll over, and I, at this point, I wasn't even sure if I still had a fish on. Came out to frog heaven today with one wish to get my first topwater pike. I got this little chunker. Hit a ribbit frog right in the weeds. Vicious, vicious strike. Tangled right up in the weeds and we had to scoop them out with the net, but nice little fish. Uh, just about 24 inches long, but man, that blow up. Well, I'll never forget that. I thought it was a big, big fish, but it was great to see a, a topwater pike strike for the first time. First fish of the day on the camera, so hit the jig worm right off this uh, set of rip ramp where we're fishing. Drops down to pretty deep water around 55 feet, so right now the boat is parking over 20. We'll get her there. Day four, our last day of fishing together on this quick trip. Uh, we got off to a really slow start. We went to one of my favorite local lakes. It's over a thousand acres big, and it's a favorite of mine for smallmouth bass. It's very underrated fishery because everybody there focuses on the walleyes and muskies, but I'm the complete polar opposite. I just go there mainly for the smallmouth. Much of the lake is rock and gravel and wood oriented. So anywhere that you find nice big chunk rock and a lot of wood piles, that's where you will get most of your smallies from. Uh, the first areas and sections of the lake we fished, it was getting the least wind out of all, but I figured that since we always get fish from there, we would catch them, but that wasn't the case for today. After an hour or so of catching maybe two or three fish, we decided to work on the absolute windiest side of the lake. From then on, we were catching fish until we stopped fishing at it around one o'clock in the afternoon. Once we found that windblown shore, it was game on. Consistency and size. I decided to switch it up now that the wind came out. I put on my Somali Spectacular, the uh, X-Wrap. It just never disappoints up here, no matter what lake I fish for. And just smashed it. So, get her undone, and I'll show you. So yeah, Somali's just like this. I'm an X-Wrap. Yeah, I love it. There we go. I finally managed to pull a decent bass out on this trip. What I came up here for. I'm pretty happy about that. On the X-Rap. Well, Daniel and I, we found a pretty good X-Rap right again. Go figure. Uh, we're fishing shallow, shallow cover in the form of logs and sand bottom, anywhere from three to five feet down. What's good about the x trap is they can be fished in any, any type of manner. You can cast it out, retrieve it, jerk it back in, make your pauses at any time interval. It, it all matters, it all depends on the mood of the fish and the way that you want to fish them. Another nice one on the X-Wrap. I fish the Rapala X-Wrap a lot back in Chicago, uh, but I'm always using white, black, natural colors. Uh, what I quickly found out up, up here, the smallmouth bass were loving anything neon, neon orange and yellow in particular. They were slamming it. 
<laughs> Most fun feeding frenzy. We're on it right now with the X-Rap. So, probably 16, very skinny, so, nice fish. This is the mama Daniel and I have been chasing after. Oh, this fish is sick. Woo! Oh, dang! Oh, that's why we should have brought the fray boat today. <laughs> I think the wind really triggered triggered the feeding frenzy that we experienced today. Another pig smallie on the X-Rap. Can't go wrong here. I'm having a blast. I'm doing what I came up here for. Came undone right in that. How many times does that happen? A lot. Yeah, this, this whole this point saddle area between the point and the island. It's our last chance out here for some more fish before we call it a day right here. And now, <laughs> look at the lake. That's what we've been dealing with all morning long. It's now 7 or 8 a.m. So, hopefully we can catch a few more of these guys before we go home. So, it's been fun. Today, the fish were all over the place for more than two hours. From 9 o'clock until at least 11, 11.30, the fish were just everywhere. They were cruising the shallows, they were looking for food, and then they were looking for X-Raps, and that's what we got them on. 